G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm looking at some switch mode voltage regulators. So these days the, the hobby is so technical, you've got to know lots about electronics sometimes and you've got to be able to wire stuff up. And one of the things you have to do quite often is provide a regulated voltage for your 12 volt FPV board camera, for your receiver, for your servos. And we use things called BEX, which actually stands for Battery Eliminator Circuit, which is just another name for a voltage regulator. And a voltage regulator takes an input voltage and either reduces it or boosts it to the required output voltage. And the whole idea of a regulator, as you might expect, is that if the input voltage goes up and down, such as your battery getting flatter or whatever, then the output voltage will remain constant. Now I've got two voltage regulators here, and this one here is a really cheapy one. You can get them from China, all sorts of places. Um, I think I got that from High Model, but I see them on eBay, I see them everywhere. They're about three or four bucks, three or four dollars. And they're supposed to do up to three and a half amps, but I doubt it. Um, you know, you probably get a couple of amps out of these without too much trouble. And they'll take an input voltage and regulate it down to whatever output voltage you want. Now, most people are used to buying a BEC that has like a five volt BEC or a six volt BEC, or maybe it's got a little jumper to change between five and six volts or a 12 volt BEC. This is variable. Here we have a little potentiometer, a little adjustable thing. You can stick your screwdriver in there, tweak that round, and adjust the output voltage to whatever you want, providing there's enough input voltage, because this is only a, what they call a buck regulator. That means it will only reduce a high voltage down to a low voltage. You can't put, or you can't expect to get more voltage out than you put in here. So these are ideal for uh, running your servos or your receiver or your flight controller from, say, a three cell pack. The servo, receiver, flight controller, they want five volts. So you can take 12 volts on the input and drop it down to five volts. And even when your battery's flat at maybe, you know, nine volts, there'll still be enough difference between the input and the output to give you the five volts. Gonna, nine volts minus five is four volts, so that's fine. It'll still regulate as much as, you know, you'd expect. Brilliant. So, as I say, I use these a lot because I can just tweak them up to whatever voltage I want as I need to. So if I need a 12 volt BEC, hey, I set it up for 12 volts. If I need a five volt BEC, set it up for five volts. Simple as that, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Right, the other one here, now this is even more interesting, is a Pol Pololu, oh, oh, what a name Pololu. It's a step up, step down voltage regulator, which means what's what we call a boost buck. And this works a bit differently because this will give you a constant output. In this case, this is a 12 volt one. It's not adjustable. You can buy them in five volts or 12 volt flavors. This will give you a constant 12 volts out regardless of the voltage that goes in. So even if you're running from a three cell pack and your battery's right down to nine volts, it'll still give you 12 volts on the output because it boosts the nine volts up to 12. That's the boost side of it. However, if you're running a four cell pack and you've got 16 volts, it'll take the 16 volts and drop it down to 12. So that's the buck side of things. It boosts and bucks. And you can usually tell a boost buck regulator because they have two of these little gray things. See the gray round things? Those are the inductors that are used to increase or reduce the voltage by chopping it up into pulses and things. If we go back to the other one, you see it's a buck regulator, it only has one of these large inductors. It only has one, this has two. So this is just a buck regulator, this is a boost buck regulator. This is really, really small. Obviously it's not going to do three and a half amps like the other one, but it's enough to drive a board camera. And that's generally what you'll use this for in most cases. If you're flying FPV and you've got a nice, say um, one of the PZ0240, whatever they are, 600 TV line Sony camera, and it's only rated to operate at 12 volts, you're gonna to have to do something to drop your 16 volts down to 12, and this is one way to do it. And if you wanna have something like a, a mini quad or a plane where you can run three or four cells, then you really need the boost buck because a 12 volt camera, um, even the good ones, they can drop out when you get down to you know 9.9, 9.5 volts. And if that's the case, then <laughs> on a three cell pack without a boost buck regulator, you could find you're losing your video just as you're coming into land because your battery's flat. That's not a good thing. There you go. So what I'm going to do now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a bit of a look at these on the bench. We're going to show you how they work. We're going to see how they the amount of ripple, the amount of noise that comes out of them, and uh, you know just have a play with them, see if they're any good. Okay, here's the very simple little regulator. This is the um, buck regulator that will reduce a higher voltage to a lower voltage. Wiring them up is pretty damn simple. If we look on the back side, you'll see it's got in and out, plus and minus. Well, hey, that's simplicity itself, isn't it? Well, all we're going to do is wire the input from our battery between these with positive to, where is it? Positive to there and no, negative to there. And we're going to wire the output onto there. And it gives us two pads for each. So it's not a difficult soldering job. Just put some wire through there, solder it up done and oops dusted it's hard to do this when you're working on the camera on the bench done and dusted in and out piece of cake so now what i'm going to do set it up on the bench we'll fire some 
power into it, see how well it regulates, see what sort of load it can take. Okay, here we are, we're all set up. We've got our power supply currently set to 12.5 volts. There's our meter, it's gonna measure the output of the little regulator. And here's our oscilloscope, it's gonna show us how much noise is actually on the voltage coming out of the regulator because the meter won't tell you how much noise is there, the oscilloscope will. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this in now. Here we go. So currently we're getting, what is it, 9.66 volts. So I'm going to wind up the sensitivity of the oscilloscope so we can see any noise that's there. So we can get an idea of that. As you can see, there's not much noise at the moment because we have 50 millivolts per division and that's about one division. So 50 millivolts of noise is not a lot. I'm going to adjust the voltage now. Go in here with my little screwdriver and tweak the voltage because I want five volts out of this. So let's go in and start turning stuff. It's the wrong way. Sorry, that, all that noise on the scope was my finger on the output. Let's go down to five. You see the, the scope dips down because it's AC coupled. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. It's not important. Let's get into 5.0 volts. Oh, too far. It's quite a sensitive adjustment on here. So, And you don't have to get it dead right. There we go. That's pretty close. I'm happy with that. Five point zero volts depending on the time of day now notice the voltage output noise is still relatively low it's a little bit more than 50 volts but it's very very sporadic not worried about that what i'm going to do of course this is without a load i'm going to put a load on later in fact no let's put a load on now i'm put some leds on there so we've got some kind of um, drain on the supply because supplies need to have a, a load for you to estimate or to see how well they really function okay so i've put a load on now we're drawing 330 milliamps from this little power supply at 4.99 volts and we still only have well it's not even 50 millivolts of noise so that's pretty credible performance now what i'm going to do of course is i'm going to play with the voltage going in and we'll see what happens now let's say currently we've got a fully charged lipo 12.5 volts let's wind it down till we get to say maybe down to 10.5 well look the output voltage remains the same it's regulating really really effectively and let's see how far we have to go before this voltage starts to disappear we go down to 9.5, 9.0, 8.8. Wow, so we're down to 7.9, 7.4, 6.9. Now look, did you see that? The, volt, the noise jumped up as I get down to about 6.4 volts. There we go, 6.4. It's just dropping out of regulation there. So suddenly, heaps of noise on the output. So 6.5 volts would be the absolute minimum you'd want to run this at, which means that the difference between the voltage going in and the voltage going out, one and a half volts. Now that's what they call the dropout voltage for a regulator. It's a very important factor. The lower the dropout voltage, then the better the regulator can operate at very, very low voltage or voltage differences. But this is superb for this ap ap application. Being able to work down to six and a half volts. I mean, a three cell lipo pack is dead long before six and a half volts. So it's not a problem, but let's go up. Let's say we're going to put in a four cell pack. So we're going to get right up there. We're going to go past 12 volts. We're going to go past 13. We're going to go past 14. We're going to go to 15. We're going to go to 16 volts. Oh look, it's still five volts out, 4.99 volts. And the noise remains unchanged. So this little regulator actually performs really, really well. And for the money, man, you can't beat them. And because you can adjust that voltage, I've got it set to five volts. I could have it set to 12 volts, but very important, you wouldn't use a regulator like this to regulate to 12 volts from a three cell pack because once you get less than one and a half volts difference, that is to say the input voltage drops to less than one and a half volts greater than the required output voltage, it all goes to hell in a handbasket. The noise goes up and the regulation disappears. So that is why the other application, the 12 volt output, we're using a boost buck. Now this will not boost the voltage. When it gets too low, everything just collapses so you've got to make sure you've got enough voltage going in the other one the pololu that will boost the voltage let's put that on the bench now and see how that performs and here is the pololu and this is really really small <laughs> my finger look at that brilliant and what we're going to have to do as it's got it written on the back here it has where are we um, shut down won't need the shut down pin it's got voltage in ground and voltage out so it's the same we're going to use a common ground we don't need to have a ground out of course as i mentioned before with the other regulator we're going to put our voltage in here and we're going to measure it out we're going to wind the voltage up and down and see whether that output voltage stays constant even when we go below the regulator voltage which in this case is five volts so i'll just whack some wires on there and then we'll put it on the bench see how it works out here we go wired up voltage uh, input ground and output so let's test it 
Okay, so I've got the Palolu uh, voltage regulator set up now. This should give us a constant 12 volts regardless of the input, but I've set the input voltage to 12 volts and I shall plug it in and hopefully no smoke will come out. Woohoo, there we go, right. <clears throat> One thing I immediately notice is a lot more noise on the Palolu regulator. There's 100 millivolts of noise there, almost 100 millivolts. That's quite a bit. So, yeah, feeding a camera might have to put some ferrites on there to stop some lines, but I'll check that out later on. So here we go. We're at 12 volts. Now this, as I say, is a boost buck regulator. So as I wind down the voltage here, this should remain the same, even if I go below 12 volts. And there we go, look at that. I've gone down to 10, 9, so there we go, I've got 8.9 volts and it's boosting it up to 12 volts, 11.97. My resistor on here is smoking because I'm drawing 1.2 watts out of here. So I better hurry up before the whole thing catches on fire. So let's go above. Actually, interesting to note, the noise drops down as I lower that. Now I'm going to go up here to 15 volts. There we go. Look at the noise. That might, might be because my resistor is smoking here. But uh, noise is really high. I've gone from, let's go to 16 volts, your, your four cell pack. Settle down a little bit at 16 volts, still doing 12 volts output, um, still about 75 millivolts, 100, maybe even 100 millivolts of noise. That's really not very good. Let's get, look at that, it, did, it really gets quite noisy here when I get to 15.5. Go down, it drops, drops, drops. Once I drop below 11 volts, when it goes into the boost mode, it's actually quite clean. At this stage, the regulators are in boost mode, it's raising the voltage from 10.7 to 11.97 when I get up there and it starts going into buck mode so it's actually dropping the voltage that's when the noise kicks in so the the buck side of this regulator is really noisy really really noisy now I'm going to try it without any ferrites on the camera and I'll see if there's any noise but there you go now this is just a little polluto I'm really impressed <laughs> there's such a tiny little thing works so well I'm drawing 1.2 watts out of it at the moment and it's working pretty damn good so that's it. Both those devices are pretty good, pretty good value, and they seem to do what they claim to do. But I will put a ferrite on the output um, if I get noise on my camera. So there you go. Now, I hope that's explained a few things. I hope it's introduced you to a couple of interesting new devices. And if you've got questions, if you've got comments, do the usual things. Stick them on the uh, piece below the description there, and I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, thank you for watching. I will now get back to the bench. Bye for now.